Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I have yet another viewer request video. Um, and in this video, what I'm going to be exploring are really the wealth of different entry level elementary data observability tools out in the market. So that if you're now looking saying, hey, you know, all this data that you now need to generate and manage and catalog in the age of AI and ML, you really need a data observability platform. You need something that's going to allow you to stitch in all your different data sources and all your different data sinks and understand the flow of data throughout your environment, uh, especially if you're working for any kind of large enterprise. So that's what I'm really going to be exploring today is what are some of the hot tools out in the market that make, you know, that you can just plop on top of your existing data infrastructure to give yourself the data observability tooling, you know, data ops dashboard that is so essential these days. Um, so I'm gonna go in through around, you know, the top eight uh, tools that I see out there on the market that I think are, you know, some of the best for getting started with data observability. Um, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, it helps me out a ton. But without further ado, let's get into it with Monte Carlo. So starting with, you know, Monte Carlo, which is really probably the most popular and you know hottest name out there on the market right now um, because it takes a very data and ai observability focused view where hey you know, these days you're most likely using data and ai together why not use them for observability as well right and so the goal here is that you're observing all of your data at once and you constantly have data observability agents um, that are you know looking monitoring at all of your data and um, checking your inputs systems code uh, models inputs and outputs and making sure that they're working effectively over time and also at a certain degree of quality um, it lets you define, you know, and so if we go over to their agentic observability, you have the idea of observability agents that you install wherever you are running your code um, or wherever you're running your data through. So, you know, your, your databases, your ETL platforms, and have these observability agents uh, collect that data, analyze what's happening there, and then filter it back up to one common Monte Carlo dashboard. Um, and so some of the best use cases for this are obviously, you know, enterprise AI initiatives where you have massive scale you need to deal with and just hiring people isn't really a feasible way to deal with it anymore. Um, and you, you have to manage and monitor all these complex data dependencies and having that be, you know, human job isn't really tenable. Um, also, Monte Carlo is super cloud agnostic. Um, it can manage, you know, connect to and manage data really in whatever platform you're using. Um, so, you know, if you're multi-cloud, you have a ton of different disparate platforms you need to manage probably a really good tool for you. Um, and it's also because of that AI nature, it's good at doing things like predictive data quality. So predicting errors before they actually occur. Um, and so if you're running into a lot of issues or hey, we don't know where our errors are coming from or they're occurring and you know, suddenly everything goes down, Monte Carlo is really good at catching those before they actually become a problem. However, it's very expensive. Uh, it's you know very premium pricing. You know, average entry level Monte Carlo contract going to be you know the early hundred k or low hundred k's, um, and it does require significant investment in setup and configuration, um, and it's probably a little bit overpowered for more simple data pipelines with limited complexity, um, and it has a very steep learning curve because you're obviously going to learn have to learn how to you know set up and derive value from ML driven anomaly detection. Um, but this is really the gold standard and I'd say, you know, what most, a lot of large enterprises are, are using these days. Now, the next tool I want to talk about is Syflet. Um, and number one, I think it's a funny name, um, but this is really a, you know, kind of managed data quality monitoring platform with, that comes with a ton of built-in data quality checks and extensive column level lineage capabilities. Um, and this is really great if you have, you know, very, uh, you know, quickly shifting dimensions of your tables. This is a platform that will help emphasize, you know, business context integration and putting in the business context, understand, hey, you know, not only are these pipeline metrics what I want to analyze, you know, how fast this pipeline is able to complete, but, you know, this is backing a, you know, customer dashboard, right? And so what is, you know, the customer, uh, you know, our, our customer reviews of this dashboard is something getting worse or better, right? And really main, trying to integrate, you know, the front of the business to the back, right? Um, and so through there, you, know, you have insights into business context issues priority in helping you know prioritize issues that are actually affecting real business processes and um, before they trigger downstream um, and you can see actually you know on these, some of these alerts you'll see that there's they have really great data monitoring troubleshooting where you can actually see how data relates to downstream tables and downstream functions and downstream business processes as well 
Um, and so, you know, this is a great tool for cross-functional data teams where you need to kind of merge, hey, front of house, more business analysts, executives need to have visibility in data health and understand where their data is coming from. Um, or, you know, impact-driven monitoring where you want to understand, you know, hey, what data issues are affecting business metrics. Um, and it's a very collaborative tool. Um, so if you have, you know, very shared ownership, transparent environment, good tool for that. Um, and also integrates really well with DBT and Airflow and other cloud data platforms. However, um, it is pretty scoped to you know, just looking at data quality and data troubleshooting and monitoring there. So it does lack a lot of the advanced infrastructure monitoring features that larger platforms might have. Um, it also doesn't have a super robust enterprise security model. It's meant to be more of a collaborative tool. So you need to keep really tight swim lanes. It's probably not the best option for you. Um, and it's also you know, just a newer player, so it doesn't have as many of the fancy bells and whistles that some of the more established players in the market might have. But really great option for getting started with for a small team that's really cross-functional. Now, the next tool I want to talk about is Excel Data. Um, and Excel Data is really you know, another kind of agentic observability platform, and it's meant aiming to be multidimensional in that it's able to you know, we'll do things like improving data reliability, data quality, uh, but also optimizing data pipeline performance and reducing inefficiencies across those pipelines and giving you, you know, kind of a full stack observability of both performance, costs, you know, infrastructure, data quality, um, and pulling that from your existing ETL tools or orchestration pipelines. Um, and some of the key capabilities here is that, you know, they really aim to sit, hey, in the middle of your data stack, you know, between your back end data pipelines and your front end, um, you know, applications and users of data and sitting there and predicting operational issues um, and, you know, also allowing you to observe all your data from you know, your data lakes, warehouses, ETL, business intelligence tools, catalogs in one place and using it to visualize all your different data dependencies. Um, and so it's really a great tool for enterprise scale operations. Again, you know, with, you have large, complex, multi-layer data architectures, uh, but also teams that are cost conscious. Um, there's a lot of focus within uh, Excel data on making sure, hey, you know, we're able to analyze the cost and the effectiveness of these pipelines. And they work with a lot of, you know, obviously very large companies. Uh, but really the crux of it is, you know, providing that single, you know, kind of connective tissue across all of your different data tools that it can observe and monitor the performance of all of them. Um, and, you know, it's, it's got a ton of, you know, enterprise grade fill tools for, you know, building on top of that as well and, and connecting into all those diverse components. However, it is again, you know, as a lot of these data observability tools, as you might notice, are enterprise focused. It's not super suited for smaller teams. Um, and because it's, you know, got a lot of complex features and you're, you know, need to plug in all of these different, you know, disparate data sources, it does require a bit of a learning curve and implementation to actually have it be a truly, you know, full stack integration um, throughout your entire business. Um, and so while it's a really great tool, it is going to require extensive customization and set up to actually be, you know, live up to its full potential. Now, the next tool I want to talk about is kind of the inverse of a lot of these other ones, which is Anomalo. Um, and Anomalo focuses basically on automated, unsupervised uh, data quality monitoring, where you don't, it, you know, it needs to be very low code in that you don't, you know, really have to design or set up or understand how to define data quality, uh, you know, checks. Instead, Trust Anomalo to use an, uh, its machine learning models to automatically detect data quality issues without any kind of manual uh, rule configuration. So the platform will automatically learn normal data patterns and alerts when anomalies occur and then detect and you know, try and prevent those to reduce the maintenance burden of you know, traditional data testing approaches. Um, and so some of the best use cases here, you know, areas where you want to have automated monitoring tools, um, where you want to minimize any kind of manual rule maintenance, maybe you either don't have the technical skills or you don't have the bandwidth to even do that. Um, also, use cases where you have really rapidly changing schemas, you know, organizations where your data structures are going to evolve quicker than your ability to define, check, design, define checks for their data, your data sources. Um, and also, unsupervised detection. If you need to catch unknown, unknown data issues, you know, data issues that you truly don't really understand these, the reason for, um, you need to have, you know, obviously a tool that can do that for you. Um, and also testing heavy data pipelines. If you are relying heavily on data quality checks in your pipelines, it's a great idea to automate those. 
Um, however, some of the drawbacks to a super automated approach is that you know you have things like you know maybe it's going to generate false positives. Um, you know it's a lot less mature in certain features and customizability compared to more longer established platforms. Right, if you do want to write your own data quality checks, probably not a great choice for you. Um, and also, you know it's just not a it's a lot of black box behind the scene that's actually doing the data quality checks for you. So if you want to have really deep customization, probably not the best tool for you. Now, the next data observability tool I want to talk about is BigEye. Um, and BigEye is you know, meant to be kind of a data observability tool actually for more legacy data stacks, you know, tool, companies that are kind of bridging the gap between, hey, more legacy on-prem workflows, but they're in the process of moving to the cloud. Um, and it's really, you know, emphasizes its ability to both plug into, hey, not only, you know, your modern cloud environments, which pretty much any data observability can do, tool can do, but also your backend environments. Um, and it does this through a very API focused approach um, and where you can, you know, have agents and API uh, callbacks from wherever you want to, you know, monitor your data back into uh, your central big eye platform. Um, and then from within there, you can define really custom alerting, data lineage checks, um, and just you know, really granular tracking of all of your data. Um, so it's really good for you know, really you know, kind of large developer-focused teams where you have a lot of skills in actually doing you know, and uh, setting up these data monitoring you know, kind of agents and tools and API-driven workflows, and where you need custom integration needs as well, you know, proprietary tools, uh, things that you know, aren't going to have pre-built connectors, right? the ease of use of connecting with this very, you know, kind of code forward platform is advantageous there. Um, so, you know, you can get a lot of value out of this if you have really those skills within your company to be able to gain that value from it. Um, however, and on the downsides, obviously, you know, it's you know got a smaller market presence compared to leaders like Monte Carlo. Um, it's got much less extensive documentation and community support because, you know, it's more enterprise grade companies, which don't want to share their resources. Um, and then also, you know, just not going to have as many of the sexy new features that a lot of, you know, the more cloud focused tools are going to have. Um, and obviously opaque pricing as with every kind of on-prem tool. Um, but if you were looking for a data observability tool to bridge the gap between on-prem and cloud, good option. Now, the next tool I want to talk about is one that's, you know, making a lot of waves and is going to start you know, growing on the market, I think, um, is Metaplane, which is owned by Datadog. Um, Datadog is making a big push in the data observability space right now, and so they're investing a ton in Metaplane. Um, and it aims to be, you know, kind of what Datadog was from structure monitoring to data monitoring. So, you know, focusing on really simple, fast time to value, understanding of your data, um, where you have a lot of really automated alerts, data CICD, and, you know, machine learning based anomaly detection that focuses on reducing alert fatigue through more intelligent prioritization of, hey, these are the alerts you should care about, here are the ones that you don't and emphasizing no code setup and really quick integration, automated integration with modern data warehouses. So things like Snowflake, Redshift, are just gonna be plug and play with without needing to actually write any code to integrate it. Um, and so it's really great for teams that you know need rapid implementation without really extensive configuration of the software. You know, don't wanna to have to code and you know do a lot of extensive development to get value out of it. Uh, and you know, small, medium sized companies, great option for them, uh, especially if you're you know, using primarily something like Snowflake or BigQuery or Redshift, where it can really just plug and play. Um, some drawbacks, though, on, on the other side is, you know, it's a little bit less feature rich um, than other data observability tools, other enterprise platforms on the market, you know, with low code comes low flexibility. Um, and so it's a little bit less suitable for a complex multi-layered cloud data architectures and has a lot fewer integrations options with more legacy or specialized data systems. Um, so while it does promote a lot of really good easy use, if you're on you know, modern cloud tooling, it's really easy to use. If you have a more diverse stack, it's probably gonna be a little bit harder to get value out of. Now, finally, the last data, you know, kind of quality data observability tool I want to talk about is Soda. Um, and this is way towards the other end of, hey, you know, not really enterprise, but more, hey, something you can really easily get started with and is fully open source. Um, it's got really strong connections with, you know, DBT, Airflow, cloud data platforms, and aims to, you know, be, hey, we're just going to plug into your existing pipelines and help you integrate things like pipeline testing and operational data quality uh, and observability into those metrics. You can see, you know, I'm understanding, hey, every time your pipeline runs, every time this data is processed, capturing the data quality checks there. 
Um, and the crux of this all is, you know, the platform allows teams to define data quality checks as code, and so does scripts, which makes data quality testing, you know, part of the development workflow. You, know, you write them as part of your CI/CD or data workflows, and every it just automatically gets run as you're producing and running data pipelines. Um, and so it's really well suited for you know teams number one that are very open source focused. Um, this is an open source tool, so hey, if you want to you know have full flexibility, full customizability of your code, and you want to not get locked in any one vendor, great option. Also integrates really well with DBT or Airflow. Um, so if you're using both of those as your primary orchestration tools, really easy option to integrate in. Um, and it also is great for companies with you know a data ops culture, right? If you're treating data quality as code within CI/CD pipelines, great tool for you because that's exactly what SOTA does. Um, and while you know it's a really great lightweight tool, it does lack a lot of the more fancy enterprise features, um, you know, compliance certifications, um, and you know, just really wide scale monitoring capabilities that the bigger platforms had have. Soda is very narrowly focused on, hey, we're just going to analyze your data quality as part of your existing pipelines, um, rather than being a whole kind of overarching platform like the other options out there. Um, so. That's really all the platforms I wanted to talk about today. If you have another platform that out there that you'd like to talk about, let me know. I'd love to get into it. Uh, but without ever, further ado, have a great rest of your day. Data Guy out.